Now on Denver 7 News at 10. Flash flood warnings are in effect tonight across the high country and burn scar areas. It hit the house like a, like a fire hose hitting the windows. Hail started to come down. Denver 7 has been in the field all day talking to people in the area as they get ready for the next round. Plus, there's a standstill at DIA as the storms continue throughout the night. We are stuck here. We don't know what's going to happen. When travelers can expect to get to their final destinations. People have forgotten the history, the history of the United States, the history of even our town, the community, the Latino community. And a family restaurant for years now given a new life, showcasing a piece of Colorado history. Thanks so much for joining us on Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Jacqueline Allen. And I'm Brian Wang. As homes and infrastructure in Larimer County took a pounding from last week's flooding, even more water is coming down tonight. Take a look at this video of flooding covering a road in Larimer County. Michael Markovich sent this in, and just last week we talked to him after his property flooded. And you can see now deja vu. Deja vu. Let's get right to meteorologist Stacey Donaldson. Stacey, this monsoon moisture just keeps coming back. That's right. This time of year, we just open the floodgates. Basically, all this moisture coming in from the southwest, pouring in across Colorado. And so we have extra moisture in the atmosphere to work with, and that's why these storms uh, put a lot of extra moisture down on the ground and create flooding conditions. We have a flash flood watch now still in effect from Salida toward Trinidad and a flood watch here for the eastern plains along with a flash flood warning just east of Lyman in toward Flagler, Flagler until 1015. The flash flood watch down to our southwest in effect until midnight tonight. So we still have very heavy rain here for the eastern plains. A lot of lightning associated with these storms that are pushing on through. So we're keeping a close eye on that. We still have scattered showers here to the south, but things have really calmed down in the last 12 hours since early this afternoon. We still have light to moderate rainfall up into northeastern Colorado, but things are quiet here in Denver. So you'll wake up tomorrow morning with partly cloudy skies. After all of this rain we saw today, we're going to have a repeat of storms for the next few afternoons. Temperatures tomorrow will be in the mid 80s at noon, but we'll talk about an even bigger cool down on the way on the seven day forecast coming up. Stacy, thank you. Now this comes about a week after flash floods in Buckhorn Canyon killed a mother and her daughter. And you know, those who live in the mountains know to take days like this today. Seriously. That's right. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon went up to Glen Haven where residents tell her floods can strike even faster than fires. It's like, seriously, again, how many more? Polly Bennett knows her property. That great big pink rock washed in today. And knows her hard work. This was formerly filled with beautiful wild rose bushes like that area. Is always a work in progress. A flood in Glenhaven has become part of my identity. I can smell it first, always, and then I hear it, and then usually about five minutes after I hear it, it hits here. Bennett lives on Streamside Drive, where her neighbors took this video just up the road from her home. Man, oh man. It's not as bad as the flash floods from last week, but Sunday's storm was still a big one. I was sitting in my living room, I could see it coming. You could just see a wall of rain. The fire department has to fight floods too. Rain runs off a burn scar like water off asphalt. A consequence of the Cameron Peak fire. It's got a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. You're much less likely to have another fire in a burn scar, which is a good thing, but you're also a lot more likely to have a flash flood, which is very bad. Something people like Bennett have come to accept as part of life in the mountains. It can be extremely dangerous. It's easy to understand how people are lost the way we lost the two over in the Buckhorn Canyon last week. So it's not something to take very lightly. We all take it very seriously. Knowing this is a place always ready to rebuild. It's trashed again now, but it's just a little landscape opportunity. Keeps me out of trouble. Because the people who live here aren't defined by a natural disaster. We are truly the definition of being mountain strong. Their community shines through the work done once the rain stops. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. A landscape opportunity. I like that. All right, the weather also put a damper on thousands of people's summer travel plans after Denver International Airport was on a ground stop for a couple of hours tonight. At last check, there have been more than 770 delays at DIA, and listen to this, 133 canceled flights. But given the traveling woes that people have been experiencing all summer long, a lot of the flyers we caught up with expected the challenge at this point. We thought it was going to be like two hours, and then all of a sudden they were like, get on the plane now, go, go, go. The pilot didn't want us to miss our um, chance to 
be clear to go. So. We waited for like nine hours. <laughs> Oh, really? It wasn't quite yes. that long. It was about three. It's an act of God, so you cannot, I mean, go against it. And we're waiting. His flight was canceled, and this ground stop, though, was lifted. It was canceled around 9.15 tonight. A massive mudslide in the middle of the East Troublesome Burn Scar has closed one mountain highway for more than 24 hours. You can see crews working to clear the mountain of mud on Highway 125 in Grand County, south of Willow Creek Pass. CDOT reported this closure last night. They put out photos showing the burned trees that are surrounding that mudslide. No word yet on when these crews will be able to clear the highway. That mud certainly does a lot of damage, right? Colorado isn't the only state dealing with extreme weather conditions. The fast moving wildfire in California is forcing thousands of people from their homes, burning more than 15,000 acres near Yosemite National Park. Mariposa County is now under a state of emergency as thousands of firefighters work to contain the blaze. Crews in the air and on the ground are doing their best to protect residential areas, but for some, it's already too late. Resident Rodney McGuire was one of many who were forced to evacuate. I knew this was a tinderbox that was going to have to burn some, sometime. We made it out. I can always rebuild. Meanwhile, a massive heat wave has sent temperatures skyrocketing from coast to coast. At least five deaths have been reported so far. Cooling centers have opened in the East Coast to help cool the masses. Boulder County officials are still investigating tonight after they discovered a body on a trail this morning. This was near the Realization Point trailhead on Flagstaff Mountain. Police have not yet confirmed the cause of death or the identity of the victim. Denver police are investigating a wrong way crash that killed two people and injured three others overnight. This happened around midnight on South Santa Fe Drive near West Mississippi Avenue. Police say a truck was going south in the northbound lanes and hit an SUV. The two people in that SUV were killed and the three people in the truck suffered non life threatening injuries. The police arrested the driver of the truck and now say they believe alcohol was a factor in the crash. A building that once housed a beloved Fort Collins Mexican restaurant was set to be demolished. But in a turn of events, commission determined the building is eligible to become a historical landmark. And Denver 7's Patrick Perez spoke to the new and previous owners about what this means for the building's future. The building that once housed Pobre Panchos in Fort Collins is getting a second chance. This little building, as little and plain as it is, is tied to so much history with its story. Monica Bird and her family owned the Mexican restaurant for more than five decades. When it struggled during the pandemic, they sold most of the ownership to a longtime customer who wanted to keep it afloat. But the new owner permanently closed its doors in March of this year, citing COVID financial strain and unforeseen circumstances. It's gutted. All, I mean, the salt and pepper shakers are gone. Um, Everything is taken. Monica and her family thought this would be the end of their story here until Raising Cane's took interest in the site. That triggered a historical review because of the building's age, which found the building is eligible to become a landmark. The owner and his counsel appealed that decision. They put over $100,000 into the restaurant to make it survive, and it just didn't work. So now, um, now they can't get out from under it. They argue by designating it as a landmark, it can't, for example, be sold to Raising Cane's as it can't be demolished and any future uses would be limited. If the property is designated as a historic landmark, it is likely that the property may remain vacant for years to come. But by a vote of 7-0 to zero Wednesday, the Fort Collins Historic Preservation Commission found it can be a landmark, a blow to the owner. Very burdensome position to put the property owner in. But a win for Monica's family. We're going to go in that direction and see where it takes us. What comes next of this building is entirely up to the owner. Monica would like to see it become a community center. This building being here is more important than ever because people have forgotten the history. The history of the United States, the history of even our town, the community, the Latino community. Patrick, thank you. Now, we contacted the lawyer representing the property owners to find out what they plan to do with this building, but the attorney had no comment. Now, Monica's family says they are currently working on submitting the paperwork to designate the building as a landmark. The new owners can still appeal the commission's decision. 
Coming up, a part of Colorado history that often goes unnoticed. There was this thriving Japanese community mixed in with this thriving African American community and there were so many beautiful points of intersection between them. An in-depth look at a new museum that is making sure that memory lives on. And new apps are reshaping the market for gig workers. The idea of having some control of our destiny, of what's become a major part of our business, uh, was a real meaningful idea. We introduce you to a new model of business that's taking shape in the metro.